run. Don't hurt Reagan. <laughs> He took an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States of America. By some, he's been called controversial. I'll keep my freedom. I'll keep my guns. Try to keep my money and my religion, too. Now, now, keep in mind that some of my guests have been approached by oh, Homeland Security or FBI saying, Oh, uh, why are you going on the Clay Douglas show? My message to those guys that are listening this morning is, Go get a cup of coffee, maybe you'll learn something. We both took the same oath, you know, to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I don't recall there being an expiration date on that. I'm going to keep my big VA. Keep my friends the same. Keep the government out of my business and y'all can keep the change. He is the free American, Clay Douglas. We know what we need. We know who to blame. Catch the Free American Hour weekdays at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. For the podcast and more details, visit www.freeamerican.com or catch the podcast by phone by calling 832-999-8621. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I'm your host, Clay Douglas. And my guest today is VK Durham. I call her Grandma. You can call her Mrs. Durham. <laughs> and my friend Grandma, we've been talking for almost 20 years now, since I got involved in the Patriot Movement, since I wanted to find out who was responsible for Waco, who was responsible for killing us, killing Americans, uh, impoverishing us, enslaving us. And who am I? I'm just an ordinary guy. I'm just an old biker from Texas that don't like to take orders from anyone, won't take orders, won't be a slave, won't bow my knee, don't care what religion you are, don't try to involve me. And I started communicating with Grandma years ago while I was doing the Free American, trying to get the information out. Trying to, and, and, you know, we really have one, I think we have one enemy. Now, the, the enemy style is divide and conquer. And they don't want the individual having power. Well, Grandma, you got a little bit of power. Maybe it was an accident. Maybe it was an act of God. But you got a hold of a trust or of a document that uh, gave you control of a few billion dollars. And uh, is that correct? It's a few quadrillion. <laughs> there's no calculator that can calculate that high anymore. Not even Jamie Diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> now, the the banksters, I mean, the, we're talking the Rothschild family on down, the Rothschild, the Rockefellers, the Bushes, uh, maybe it's just a coincidence that all these people are Jewish. Uh, maybe uh, the whole uh, protocols of the elders of Zion. doesn't really matter if it was a forgery. If it was a plan for one world government, we're well on our way. That plan's being implemented now. That's their goal. They want one world government, uh, but they want a one world government of the banksters, by the banksters, and for the banksters. Am I correct about that? Oh, you're a thousand percent correct on that. They don't want the people to own anything. And if the people own anything of value, you know, you saw this happen back during the farm claims period where, and the S now crisis where they were making these, um, what the, well, that's what they called uh, creative financing loans. And I don't know how many of you remember that, but that, that was Neil Bush and Charlie Keating, the Union Bank, which is, you know, that's the Nazi Bank. But they were uh, doing this uh, creative financing. Well, that creative financing uh, tied up every piece of property that had mineral rights or water rights on it. 
and these suckers illegally stole every ounce of property we had. And then, to top it all off, Neil's daddy, George W. Bush, he put in Executive Order 12803, which and sold all of our properties off. Now, you've got to remember, when he sold off the infrastructure and assets, he sold off every bond that in every town, in every uh, village, every county, every city, every state, that had been put on our properties, such as our homes, our farms, our businesses, etc. Those were tax bonds. And he sold those off to foreign countries. Right now, you see foreign countries running our interstates here. Our toll roads that were paid for by these bonds are now being retold by these foreign corporations. Grandma, do you have a do you have a, a radio or something playing in the background? Hang on just a minute, please. Uh, how's that? That's much better. Thank you. I like the sound of your voice. <laughs> <laughs> but now, anyway, now, Grandma, let me let me now. I got started in this really before I started the Free American. I got started in this because I was handed a document by a Vietnam vet in Sturgis, South Dakota mm -hmm. that detailed George Bush as CIA director directing an operation called Operation Watchtower that ran in conjunction with the uh, with the whole uh, Iran-Contra uh, thing. And uh, this was the uh, smuggling operation that uh, they used the special forces to build radio guide towers down in Columbia and they brought uh, uh, over 100 planes uh, into Albrook Air Force Base in Panama mm -hmm. and I've spoken with the guy that was on the operation, was in the jungles, that was in the firefight in the jungles, his name is uh, William Tyree. I remember Bill. And and I still want to get Bill. He's still doing life in prison. They killed his wife and framed him for the murder. And and that's all documented in my book, Mystery Babylon. I got the whole of the documentation, and I followed it all the way I, until I spoke with uh, Bill Tyree's mother and Bill Tyree himself in Walpole Prison doing life. I had that you know, kind of I didn't ability. Know what happened? I, a lot of us didn't know what happened to Bill. As far as I know, he's still in Walpole Prison. We've uh, he's tried to get his case reviewed. He's tried to get his case reviewed, but this draws this draw. He is a direct a direct witness to the connection of George Bush. And I ran that story in my biker magazine back uh, twenty some odd years ago, twenty five years ago in Miami. I ran that story, and that's the first time I got threatened by the uh, CIA. The second you time know, they not, tried to kill me. Not all those men in the CIA are buttheads. There's some good guys in the CIA. It's just like, you know, we've got bad guys in uh, the Office of Naval Intelligence. But we've got some damn good men in the Office of Naval Intelligence. And my husband's uh, Naval Intelligence, it was his office that was taken out on 9-11. Those boys were investigating... Um, that those two $120 billion transactions that Bush and Clinton put down in 1991. And so, the, and that's actually what Gene Valentine and Dan Hughes is after, is those documents. But those documents, believe it or not, I had already faxed over to Interpol. So Interpol has those. No, 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 let me stop. Let me stop you for a moment. Do you know, I sent copies of Operation Watchtower, the drug smuggling operation. I sent that to Bill Clinton when he was running against George Bush, and Bill Tyree called me and laughed at me. And I said, Bill, don't you? Bush is a drug dealer. Don't we need to get him out of here? He said, Clinton ain't gonna say nothing to him. <laughs> He works for George Bush. You'll hear a lot. You'll hear. You'll hear a lot this year. Uh, and this was ten, fifteen years ago. 
you'll hear a lot this year about a little place called Mena, Arkansas. Yeah, that's and, the Alligator Alley stuff. And Barry Seal, who I also happen to know, have met once before they assassinated him, he flew, he dropped off some nice Oaxacan uh, with me in Dallas as he was flying the cocaine to uh, George uh, to Bill Clinton in Mena, Arkansas. And so he called Russell just before, as he was getting ready to make that flight, and he called Russell, and I heard him say to Russell, uh, "Russell, he said he said they're they're getting ready to kill me," and Russell said, "Who's getting ready to kill you?" And he said, just a minute. He said, um, Russ said, uh, he told me to get off the phone at that time. So whatever they said, I have no idea. But after that conversation concluded, Russell said to me, he said, uh, you be real careful when you drive anywhere or go anywhere. He said, uh, they could be after me too. And that's when he and I, uh, we made our agreement that uh, if one of us, if they got one of us, that the other one would not go to their aid. And that's uh, just not so long there, but uh, around the, that's around that time that they sprayed Russell with that sarin out in the yard. And I guess they thought they'd get me too, but they didn't. They sprayed him with sarin, so, mm -hmm. and and this is uh, after Barry Seal had called him. You know, they tap all of our phones. I mean, I, I had uh, Casey Nethercott call me up and tell me he wanted to invest and get the free American started again after the accident, and he said, come down and talk to me, and, uh, you know, I said, mm -hmm. well, buy, buy me breakfast. I'll be down in the morning. Well, they shot him coming out of Safeway with my breakfast. I'll be darned. Well, and uh, the sheriff doesn't take any responsibility for it, but uh, says it was the uh, IRS or somebody that was coming after him or some. At any rate, uh, but uh, they didn't kill him, but they still ended up putting him in prison for, uh, which is what they do. That's what they did to Bill Tyree. Bill Tyree's still doing okay. life in prison after they killed his wife, and Catano okay. documented all that. It's in my book, Mystery Babylon. Look what they did to uh, Gunther Rustocker. Look what they did to him. Now, what's the situation on this? Uh, we're, we're, you're still posting on Rumor Mill. No, I'm not anymore. No? Um, Ray Lynn, she connected in. Well, you know, there's always been a lot of rivalry there between Ray Lynn and I. And it was always a one-upsmanship. Whatever I did, she did more of it. You know, whatever I... She was, she was the queen bee. So when this Jean Valentine thing popped up, well, she was a dumb shit and fell right into his trap. He snookered her also. And now she uh, she was up here at Aspen Manor. I don't know what's going to happen to her with her associating with him. Now, that's these, a, this these, is where you people, were... This okay, is, let me finish. Go ahead. Finish. These are people that think they are they are so special. Oh, their ass is too good to sit on a toilet seat. That they think there's a big uh, condominium ship, and they call it the world, and they think they can go out there and buy these condominiums if there's only a 200 capacity for the ultra-rich. No poor people are allowed there. The only thing that they can do is wait on these rich people. And now this is her attitude and Jean Valentine's attitude. Now they 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 want to go get into an island. Oh, they're going to go live on an island, and the poor folks yeah. can't go there and live, but the rich can, and the poor folks can wait on them. Now this is the attitude of Raylan Rustbacher. Raylan. Not many people know this. Ray Lynn is, is uh, one of the heads 
of that bogus OIPC. She was, she told me herself, and I've never lied to any of you, and may I get a whack if I ever have. She told me, this was in, I think it was in 2008, and she told me that um, she had been trained to do what Doris Ecker was doing, but Doris got the job. Well, Doris and that Sananda and that bunch, Ray Chat Dam, etc., are the ones that set up that bogus OITC with the prosperity program that everybody thought they was going to get billions of dollars out of. And that was tied into the farm claims that they rooked everybody and out. Now, this is, do, are, are we talking about uh, the, the, the whole Nassara, Nassara myth bullshit? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. So, and all they wanted to do was to steal everything that everybody's got, like Gene Valentine dumbing up his spreadsheets, Gunter Rusbacher dumbing up his spreadsheets, they leverage them in their LSPs, they go in and bankroll them, just like what took Cantor Fitzgerald down. It's what's taking Goldman Sachs down. It's what's taking them all down right now, because they cannot honor those commitments. But they look good on paper. Gene, Gene Valentine presented his his agent, Carl Kaler, presented a financial spreadsheet in a court here in Wellsburg, West Virginia, stating that they had paid my medical bills, and I'll be go to hell if I didn't go to the doctor this last week and find out. I was being submitted with medical bills that Gene Valentine had said that he had paid and was charging them off to get a tax break on them and to leverage them in his finances. That's what happened. This is what's going on. You got a bunch of, and I call them psychopaths because there's not anything else that you can equate them to. It's a bunch of psychopaths. And they're out there by hook, cook, or whatever. And they're, they're trying to steal everything everybody owns. Well, I'll be going to hell they didn't steal mine because when I challenged J.P. Morgan's collateral base, by God, that's what I meant. I challenged it, you son of a sea cook. You don't own it? I do. Just trust us. I'm the guardian. Now you go stuck behind Kit like you've been trying to make the people do. This stuff belongs to the people. It don't belong to J.P. Morgan. It don't belong to that bogus Federal Reserve. It don't belong to the IMF. And simply the IMF is sitting there with $50 billion in unauthorized collateral off of this trust. That's why they got trouble. And I, you think I'm not pissed? You got your ass I'm pissed. I'm pissed because when I see people, and I see young people, I see old people, I see people from every walk of life hungry. The food prices are so damned high, the gas prices, you can hardly afford to go buy gas. And when you get there, the food prices are so high, you can't afford to buy it. I suggested to the president, of the United States that they do what Harry Truman did do a freeze roll prices back they'll have to roll them back now to 1990 so that, pri so that prices and wages can meet otherwise the American people are going to have a damn problem you're going to see another and I, I, I think that this is what Russell meant when he said, what he said on November the 17th, he said, of 93, after they kidnapped him and we brought him home and everybody sat around and they said, well, Russell, what happened? He sat there with that thousand yard stare on his face. Finally, he spoke. And he said, you know, when the American people wake up, he said, I wouldn't want to be the president. I wouldn't want to be in Congress. I wouldn't want to be in Senate. I wouldn't want to be a judge. I wouldn't want to be law enforcement. He went all the way down, all the way down 
the chain down to the local dog catcher. And he says, because when the people find out, he says, they're going to round them up, they're going to give them a fair trial, and they're going to hang those son of a bitches on the Capitol steps. And I said, yes, all. How can you give individuals a fair trial with a predisposition of hanging them? <laughs> well, I said, my God, that's a prejudicial court. He said, no, he said, by God, it's treason. That's what they'll hang them over is treason. It is. It is, Grandma. Everything, you know, everything that I've done for the last 25 years has been to honor that oath that I took to defend this Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. We I have more We have more domestic enemies than we do foreign enemies. And sometimes we're our own worst enemy because in the Patriot Movement, just what's happening with Ray Lynn and you right now, look, why, you know, if we had the money represented by your trust to work with to put these people in jail, to pay, to, to help cover the police, and that's what they were set up for. It was set up, as I understand it, your trust was set up to support the American people, the uh, the, the people that have been loyal, like the that. farmers. Okay, uh, uh, Clay, it's, it's, it backs up, uh, this trust ultimately backs up you know, like the military, they're losing their pensions and benefits. It backs them up. It backs the union and their pensions and benefits. It backs uh, the entire spectrum of the American public. Those of us who have worked all of our lives and seen what we worked for are being given away to a freaking bunch of wetbacks. It backs the American people because none of it, absolutely none of it, Clay, will ever go to a non-natural born American citizen unless they have taken the oath to uphold and protect and defend this nation. They don't get a damn penny of it. This is a uh, this is a marble thing. Now you talked about this farm movement, and and now Dr. Eugene Schroeder was involved in that. Uh, he led the uh, tractor march on Washington. Yeah. And Good man. and the I, I I've told people that any time a communist regime takes over a country, mm -hmm. they go after three class three classes of people in order, the first being the farmers, because they don't want you being able to feed yourself. Our farmers have been under attack for well over a hundred years, ever since the Civil War at any rate. They, they've they tried to turn our farms into the ninth plank on the Communist Manifesto, which is corporate farms. Can you say Archer Daniels Midland? Can you say Monsanto? And they're poisonous. The food they're creating to sell to us is killing us. I know. Now they I have maintained that, Clay, and I, I don't know what gives me this idea, but there's just a little bee buzzing around in my bonnet. And that bee is telling me that these people that are doing all this are not all human. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, Clay, if they were human, they wouldn't be destroying our water. They wouldn't put, be putting all those chemicals on our, on our uh, vegetables and, and foodstuffs. They wouldn't be injecting all of these cows, milk-producing cows, with all of these chemi uh, chemicals which is causing the mad cow disease and if you ever notice it's always a dairy cow that gets the that's doing the falling it's not one of the others it's not a, it's not an angus and it's it's not a uh Hereford. it's it's um, a holstein but if you notice i don't believe these people are human I well you know there's 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 some uh, there's some concern about that you know, for for a few hundred thousand years, we've been fighting the Neanderthal. Did we win? 
Are are they so still with us? Are they still with us? I'll go back to what uh, Dr. Bellows, or Colonel, uh, General Bellows, United States Air Force, retired. General Bellows told Russell and I about a situation that happened over at White Sands, 27 levels below ground, where they were cloning human DNA with alien DNA. Well, they were also conducting the same thing in White Speech, if you remember, or Black Speech, rather. And they were doing the same thing at Black Speech. But anyhow, we were told by Dr. About Colonel Be or General Bellows, excuse me. There's been so damn many colonels and doctors and crap. All right. Right? Hold on and just a moment that. here. I just, hooked, I just got hooked into a couple more stations. So for you Truth Radio listeners and Crusade listeners, the whole recording for the show will be up on uh, freeamerican.com on Blog Talk Radio. My guest is VK Durham, who I, I call, and I think I've earned the right to call her Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I think every American does. That's all right. I've I, I, I've achieved the status of grandpa myself, so you know. Well, anyway, no, Russell was grandpa. Russell. Was <laughs> but any anyway, he told us, and Russell and I sat there in utter disbelief about these uh, individuals that had been cloned breaking loose, and they killed the personnel there, and they broke out of there. Now these individuals were blue-eyed. They had uh, either blonde or sandy brown hair. They were all left-handed and used a um, type of the script similar to the old Parker house. And you know, I have been noticing since all this KRAP started, how many left-handed people we've got in our administrations. Now you know during our generation, during our generations, you were forbidden to use your left hand because it caused the alternative cortex, or the alternative side of the brain, to uh, operate, which was counter uh, to the uh, program that had been set up and following the law. You've got left handy left ones that think they're above the law. It's a bunch of psychopaths that's running. And well, you've got I, I, now, now, you know, keep, keep in mind, Grandma, that I am left-handed. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, you look at how many of our leaders since this time. And that was in, what was this, 1979, I think it was. But they had cloned all of these individuals. I've thought about that a lot of times because these and they they've allowed our waters. This Ohio River runs about a mile down away from me here. Yes. There's not a drop of that water that's drinkable. You can't get a fish out of there that's edible. You think about what I'm saying. Yeah, I I understand that. By the way, up on my website right now, folks. To, to cope with exactly what Grandma's telling you right now, the water is polluted, and it's going to get more polluted as that radiation comes over here. You know, the radiation levels are rising. I've heard, I've heard reports of uh, 28,000 people may have been uh, uh, affected by the radiation here, may have died from this. They may Let's not tell you about it. But by the way, I've got water filters up on my site now that will take out not only fluoride, but we'll take out radiation also, so. It's getting bad. Now, Grandma, let me let me ask. You know, I, I for a long time ago, you know, when I started the militias, I was doing, I did that over what happened